And hello, and welcome to World Sand Project. I'm the magical sand genie and life coach to the rich and famous, Shelly Carney. And my name is Toby Yunus. I'm an administrative assistant to the magical sand princess and life coach to the rich and famous stars. That's right. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a sample from Shell Beach near Pismo Beach in California, United States of America. I'm not sure why they call it Shell Beach because I couldn't find much of there. There are shells, but not in the way that we see in others. It's mostly rocks, but some of them are pretty good looking rocks. So uh, stick with Spoiler. us. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Uh, stick with us. We're going to have fun. So let's get some. Uh, skipping you one towel? Wow, that wasn't loud enough, was it? I'm skipping you one towel. Of course you want towels. Uh, it's make a really sure th thick door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make sure that before you leave today, you uh, like our video. YouTube likes it when you like our video. Share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your business associates, and the entirety of your social networks. And if you're not already a subscriber, this would be the ideal time to subscribe by clicking on that Boga. subscribe button. And then when you see the bell, ring that notifications bell and that way every time we start a live stream you'll be immediately informed and in the know because there's nothing better in life than being uh in the know and we hope you learn a little bit from uh, our various uh programming methods so uh let's continue with our housekeeping i do want to let everybody know that um We'll switch over here for a second that shelly's daughter alicia has taken some of our sand images uh and uh, put them on products in her silly woo designs um page store. on a ro store on what's the name of the property red bubble red bubble uh and uh, she's put them on a lot of different things these are the first five samples that she did and the way red bubble does is it, is it shows you a sample but if you click on that if you click on that sample there uh so this is the uh notebook uh uh, you can go and down here it says available on 58 other products. So you have a choice of products all the way from t-shirts through hoodies, through mugs images, through leggings, mugs, through leggings, through mini skirts. Uh, yeah, it's just got all kinds of uh, products that, uh, that uh, come from our, our prints. So that was very thoughtful of her. So that's uh, Silly Wood Designs. The link, the bit.ly version of the link is in the description box below. So please feel free to go there. Um, let me see. I wanted to go, I wanted to go someplace else. I wanted to mention something else. Oh, you know what? I erased it. Did I? Okay. So one of the reasons we started, no, the primary reason we started the World Sand Project is because I saw a TEDx talk by a gentleman whose name is Vince Beiser. And uh, Vince is a journalist. And he's the one that made me aware that uh, not only are we experiencing a shortage of sand in the world, uh, but as a result, there's a crisis in which people are being killed for uh, sand that's on their property in places like India and uh, Russia and China and Malaysia and places like that. So uh, our mission here is not as much to share the sand samples that we receive from our viewers with you, but uh, to uh, let you know that there is a crisis in sand. It is the thir third most consumable resource on the face of the planet, and the planet is not replenishing it faster than we're using it. And just as an example, uh, it takes 200 tons of sand to build the average American house. Uh, and so it is indeed in crisis. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, go down. There's a 15-minute video that in which uh, uh, Vince talks about uh, uh, what he's found. And he wrote the book, as a result, A Grain of Sand, in a, uh, a World in a Grain of Sand. And uh, so I'm going to post this link down there. And uh, I have a playlist. It's part of a playlist that we've made covering uh, this very topic. So please feel free to uh, take a look at it. I'll post that in the, uh, in the uh, chat room. And then the other thing is if you want to learn more about some of the things that we're talking about, you can go to the World Sand Project on YouTube. And we have a complete line of playlists there. Uh, and they covered the topics, our live streams, rocks and minerals, fracking, 
uh, Papakolia Beach in Hawaii, Foraminifera, which is a topic we get to talk about a lot, and we will talk a little bit about it today. Uh, four amps for short. Here's a big long playlist, uh, 35 uh, videos on the world shortage of sand, uh, the geology of sand and sand under a microscope as other people have put sand under the microscope. There's a couple of good videos there. So uh, what we're trying to do is keep you well-rounded in terms of sand in the context of geology and sand in the context of the world's sand shortage. So stay with us and uh, make, yourself, uh, make yourself aware of uh, these things. Okay, let's first go to um, uh, right. Is that Reddit? Oh, that's Redbubble. Okay, so let's go over to our sample. Uh, and you will find uh, this link is in the uh, description box below, but you will find these photos at bit.ly, bit.ly. Uh, dot ly or I'm sorry bit.ly slash WSP 0027 photos and the WSP and the P in photos are capitalized uh, so you can uh, find them there uh, that's where we put all our photos and for any other sample up to 27 if you look at WSP 0001 photos you'll find the photo set for that so that's and one that's we've... in the description box as well. Right. They're, they're in the description box of each one of the videos that we produce. So let's go on to talk about uh, where this uh, uh, particular sample was collected. Uh, it was collected in California uh, along the California coast. And this area, I always do it from our home here in New Mexico. Oops, it did it again. Let me go back. Brian here. Gates said, did you ever think the WSP and Fen Chase would overlap? As a new searcher, I was aware of Cozumel, but not Quintana Roo. That surprised me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there has to be some kind of overlap on occasion because uh, when you uh, perform these, when you when you collect sand and you say you go to the Madison River because there's as much sand on the shores of the Madison River as there are uh, on some of the beaches that we uh, have uh, examined, samples from which we've examined thus far. Uh, so it'll, it, it'll have a tendency to overlap. I mean, we've had, uh, we had a sample, of course, from Montana, and uh, it was in the Gallatin. So, yeah, there's going to be some overlap there. And, and I guess I'm not surprised. I was surprised um, uh, that I got a sample from Cozumel because I was aware that Quintana Roo was uh, was at Cozumel and Quintana Roo was, of course, the place that Fenn's brother uh, passed away, was uh, killed in a, in a diving accident, died in a, I don't, I want, I don't want to say killed, died in a diving accident there, so... Uh, the area that we're looking at is uh, at Pismo Beach in San Luis Obispo County. Uh, St. Louis the Archbishop, I guess, Arch the St. Louis the Bishop is what it translates to. Mm. Uh, it's about uh, halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's north of Santa Barbara, uh, and it's kind of in the area that we uh, collected the Monterey Bay sand from. So this area right here is called sand. Let me let me go back one so you can see it. So the area that we're looking at right here is called uh, San Luis Obispo Bay. Uh, but then it's broken down. This area right here uh, is referred to as Pirates Cove Bay. Uh, and our sample is taken from here. Now that little hillock right there, that set of rocks, actually is a demarcation line between the you have to be dressed beach here, uh, which is uh, Shell Beach, and um, the nude beach right here. So uh, just be careful if you're using this path from the parking lot down, you'll end up having to walk through the nude beach uh, first if you go looking for sand. So let's go to our other images of the sand. This is what the project looked like. I did divide it so this sample here that's in the bottle here, that's in the first crucible here, uh, passed the under two millimeter test. These did not. Uh, they're bigger. We're going to take a look at them, but they, they don't tolerate much magnification. Uh, but those are, that's how the sample divided up. Uh, the, the one that was collected. Uh, that's what it looks like in the bottle. Very colorful. Uh, if you were to stand back from it, it would show up as brown-gray rather than some of the most recent samples where it shows up as, uh, you know, white or uh, light white. There was some magnetism in some of the uh, rocks in the sample. And I should, uh, I think I already said it, uh, most of the sample is rocks. Uh, and I think I can explain why when we take a look at the maps. Um, I did, I have acquired recently, oh, I left it out in my workshop, uh, these two devices that enable me to judge the sample, its size, and 
uh, how uh, round or not round, how angular or round the sample is. So this falls into the category of very coarse sand. It's between one and two millimeters uh, across, and this is what I'd call sub-rounded. It was closer to being rounded than it was to being angular, uh, but that gives you a sense of the way to make that uh, comparison. Uh, the larger of the uh, the ones that didn't make it through the two millimeter C, they, uh, the, between two and four millimeters, except for this right here, it's a shell fragment, um, are, are called, are referred to as granules. Uh, so that's, uh, we did, I'm, I'm going to s store them uh, with the sample because I think uh, they should be, that's what, you know, it was sieved out. So this is the uh, sample, uh, wide angle, lots of colors, but as you can see, very, I'm, I don't know how else to say it, very rocky. There are shell fragments. This right there is a shell fragment, uh, but there's a lot of very polished rocks. And when we go to the maps, and actually, let me go do that first so I can kind of explain what we're looking at. So this beach right here is on a bluff, and along the bluff you can see uh, that along the beach bluff, there's houses b built. And I don't know if you remember me having the conversation about the uh, 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 California Coastal Protection Act um, of 1972 or 73, uh, but you couldn't build along the beach anymore. The beach was public property. But uh, they do allow you to build where they are bluffs. And some of these houses go back a while. A lot of them look like they're uh, new buildings, like somebody bought the property. But you're probably talking pretty expensive houses. But when you look at it in 3D, I'm, I'm not sure if we can. But you can see these houses are built along a uh, cliff, basically, and hopefully far enough back from the cliff that when uh, they get some rough uh, weather in, uh, as it erodes the cliff, they don't lose it. So you have to go north. Now, this is actually an area called Shell Beach. I guess the beach itself is not called Shell Beach. It's just the area. Uh, there is an STBP beach, but it's a difficult climb down. Our sample was taken from here, and as I said, over on this side is uh, Pirate's Cove nude beach and there are a lot of pictures when you get pictures of it there's always sailboats out here in pirate's cove that make their way in and um and uh to set anchor there and get onto either the nude beach or the non-nude beach so it's a nice area it's a nice california area uh it's relatively easy to get to i mean you do have to climb down the buff bluff but there are uh there are uh walkways down and there is parking uh, over here, and you, I don't think you're allowed to park along the road, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it looks very white there. This is the only area that I thought matched the color itself of the sand, and there are, are no real good, um, as, I, as I dropped our little yellow guy here, let me see if I can find a place where he was. I think it's right about here. But, yeah, there we go. So I was afraid that I had that I have gotten on the wrong place here. Probably but you can see it's, uh, it's a little bit off color as you see the sand. Um, and then that's on the other side of that little ridge uh, is the uh, Pirate's Cove nude beach. Uh, this is not the nude beach, although the sign says it's the nude beach. It's not. And then I don't know whether you can see them in the image right here. You'll see some sailboats uh, anchored off nude beach there. Uh, and it's a good anchor point because it's uh, very protected. Uh, very nicely protected. So, but we've seen these California beaches before, and ag and again, uh, I think Shell Beach refers to the city that it's closest to because I wouldn't think of this as a as a shell beach. There just isn't uh, enough shell material in it to call it a shell beach. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> as we're not looking at them anymore. So, uh, yeah, it's a good uh, sample. I have posted a link to this set of maps down in the description box below uh, to give you a sense of where we're at. We were, uh, I noticed that we're north of Santa Barbara because uh, Santa Barbara is right here. There's the Channel Islands right there. So we're just a little bit uh, north of that. And then the 101 goes further north all the way uh, into Monterey. So it's... Uh Okay, we're back uh, for so for the second show in one week. OBS crashes on it, and I'm kind of concerned that it has to do with a number of uh, of uh, uh, Chrome windows I have open. It doesn't seem to like uh, Chrome very much. 
uh, and it crashes on us, so it separates our video. So uh, we're right back online, so bear with us, uh, and I apologize for that. Um, and we just got, when I, when I went back to the window at which the, the um, photos were, uh, I got a little honk. <laughs> it just honks at me, and then it says OBS has crashed. So uh, we'll try to avoid that, uh, and I'm not sure. Uh, the problem is I've got to have a couple of windows open uh, a, in order to be able to share the maps and the images with you, but it sure has a negative effect on OBS. Uh, so we'll have to figure out what the heck that's all about. I've got plenty of memory. It's a 32 gigabyte computer. Uh, it's a Xeon processor, so it's got pl plenty of perfor performance. But there just seems to be something between OBS and Chrome that is incompatible because it happened to us a couple of times. Uh, it happened to us a couple of times on our um, one of our other channels. So as a result, what I'm going to have to do is uh, uh, stitch these two videos together, and further as a result, we're going to eventually lose the. Um, the chat. The uh, chat. So we apologize for that. But uh, we'll see. Um, we'll try to figure out what's causing all of that. Uh, okay. So let's go back to uh, the. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go back the to the sand. Window shot. Yeah, back to the sand. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this is uh, this is a photograph. This isn't actually the uh, microscope. But as you can see, it is uh, primarily a very rocky shore. And I was going to explain why, and I'm almost hesitant <laughs> to do that again. Let me close some of these other windows. Let's see. Close that. We can close that. And you've got that. Uh -huh. Okay. So the reason I was going to, I wanted to uh, sh explain to you. Uh, is that when you look at it up close and personal, you can see there's a line of a chain of mountains here, and these mountains were uh, the result of uh, both volcanic and tectonic activity. That's just the nature of California, and there's one line literally right above the beach, and uh, you can see it right here. This dark line. Um, it it actually had a name. Uh, the Ontario Ridge. Uh, and you can see where this is weather-worn on this side. So a lot of that rock material, it is dark. It isn't basaltic dark. I wouldn't call it volcanic dark. But a lot of that material from here, here, and here is ending up on that beach. And I think that's why we have so, uh, so much rock in our sample rather than uh, shell material or uh, forearms like we've seen in the past. And, of course, it has the polish of being weathered by being tumbled in the ocean, uh, you know, weathered, being drawn into the ocean, and then being tumbled by the waves uh, to give it that nice little polish. Uh, but I did see the occasional, this one here is, uh, is uh, calcium uh, carbonate. Um, so there is a little bit of it. This right there, that little shiny white one, is shell material. But as you can see, that stone right there is a conglomerate. As a matter of fact, one of the folks on Reddit looked at the picture one in the uh, geology uh, subreddit said, probably a lot of multicolored Franciscan churches, some gran granitoid clasts, shell fragments, and if you're lucky, some metamorphic like blue schist, jadeite, and serpentine. So for those of you that are trained geologists... Oh, serpentinite. Wow. Serpentine is just yeah, to go like yeah. that. <laughs> so, and I, I feel like that would be the uh, Franciscan church right here, like like that, because again, they look more like rocks than they do shell. When you said that the first time, I thought you said Franciscan church. Oh. I was <laughs> like, church? There's little churches in there? <laughs> so this is material that's larger than, that's the material that's larger than two millimeters, doesn't qualify as sand, qualifies as granules. It's larger than two millimeters, but smaller than four millimeters. And you can see one of those granules just does happen to be a, a miniature uh, shell. So, uh, but there were some interesting things. You can see this strip of metallic looking material in this one rock. So uh, I'm sure a geologist who's more experienced than a geologist, I was going to say more experienced than me, but all geologists are more experienced than me, could explain why that's there. Let's uh, switch over to the microscopes and take a look at the sample under the scope. Uh, the scope, the light on the scope creates a little bit more color than you'll see uh, in the sample itself. And I can't zoom in too far, but I picked this one because that little white uh, 
that this white object over here has those telltale holes of a foram, as does this right here. That one's more polished. But those the polished ones here are basically tumbled stones, for lack of a better way to describe them. It would be like you took a handful of stones, threw them in your tumbler, and just polished them up, because that's what happened to these rocks that have come down from those mountains uh, above. But there are smaller fragments that are shells. They just, they're just not as dominant. The rocks are really the most dominant uh, uh, imagery uh, in here. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to zoom all the way in and then zoom back out because uh, these things are just a little bit bigger than we're accustomed to. They're, they're, uh, you know, they are sand in that they are under two millimeters, but they are just barely under two millimeters. They're about to achieve that. So uh, we lose uh, depth of field right away just because of their uh, size. I'm going to push it out even further, I think. Let me zoom out. A little bit for the right there. So th there's a good selection um, for you. And that white object there, you can see the little telltale holes uh, that come from the foram, uh, from the little foram feeding arms. Uh, but more rock than anything else. I didn't see anything. That was that uh, this one over to the right was as close as I got to anything that looked like uh, like a translucent or clear quartz, but I, I couldn't even be sure about that, just again because, uh, you know, it looks more rocky than it does anything else. There is some polished shell material in there, but uh, the, dominant, uh, the dominant set is from uh, rock. And it has all the color associated with a variety of rock. You know, it's got uh, the reds, the blues, there's green, there's turquoise, uh, there's almost one that looks a little bit like a uh, tiger's eye. Uh, so a very, you know, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself now, a very rocky uh, sample, but a good one nonetheless. When I put it under the uh, polarizing microscope, I literally got nothing in response to it. Uh, but there are shell fragments. There may be some forams in there. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to take a look at them under the... Um, under the uh, higher magnification of the polarizing uh, micro microscope to be able to truly tell. So I don't know if anybody out there is a geologist and has any sense of, you know, what the dominant stuff is in here, uh, geologically speaking, uh, they can share that with us. So let me go to the bigger of the two samples. This is the one that's classified as granules. And... Uh, I, I'm going to have to zoom out even further for this because they're just, you know, it's almost all the way. I'm back to the maximum wide angle zoom on this. But n not much difference, mostly rocks, uh, very little quartz, very few shell fragments. We have that one big piece there that you saw in the photograph earlier. Uh, but that's even larger than the, the four millimeter. That was that I kept it just because it didn't make it through two millimeter. It probably wouldn't make it through a four millimeter sieve either. But uh, I, I guess I was really surprised at uh, how little quartz in comparison to other uh, seashore samples that uh, we've seen, which tend to be predominantly shell followed by quartz. This one has neither of those. It is predominantly rocks with some shell uh, in it, with, a, with the, the, uh, even the bigger sample of the two. So real interesting location, very different from what we've seen in other California coast uh, pictures. And, and if you want, you can go back to our web albums and you can see some of those other samples where it, when, when you look at them, uh, you know, primarily shell, a little bit of fish poop uh, in the form of uh, what was formerly coral as... Uh, consumed by the uh, parrotfish and then uh, deposited back onto the seafloor. So uh, pretty different. Let me put the, the uh, smaller of the two samples. I did, uh, when I usually when I'm looking at a sample in the... see that. When I'm looking at a sample under the uh, polarizing microscope so I can get the light on it in an even way, I usually put it in a Petri dish as opposed so it's just one layer of uh, sand. So let's put that under the stereo microscope and see if we can identify anything. I'm just going to scroll around on it. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go back. Thank you. So I'm just going to scroll around this one layer and see if there's anything of great difference and or interest. 
Yeah. Lots of rocks. I just I wanted to see if I could find so it's hard for me to tell if that one in the center right there is actually yeah, it's not quartz. That's a shell fragment. But like I said, it's not uh, there is some angularity. I'll call it sub-rounded rather than angular because most of it's uh, smoothed off. Uh, it's been bouncing around at the bottom of the seafloor there. Oops, that was my fault. I keep banging that. I mean, if, if these were rocks, I mean, if they were larger than s grains of sand, it would make a pretty nice little rock collection just because of the variety and because they're already tumbled for you. They're already tumbled and uh, polished. So that's what makes it kind of neat. There's a, there's a normalized shell fragment, you can tell, uh, because of the way that it's polished. Let me zoom in on that just a little bit. And when it's, it's that white and polished like that, like that one right there, over to the left side, uh, that that tends to be shell fragments, but I don't see many of those in this uh, sample. I see rocks of all colors and categories and mixtures, uh, but not a lot in the way of uh, quartz. So very different sample from what we've seen in the past. Uh, there's some miniature, basically, you know, sand grain sized uh, conglomerates, which are mixtures of uh, other rocks and minerals. Um, so I'm going to have to assume they come from that, uh, those mountains directly above uh, uh, where the sample was collected. Oh, look, there's an interesting combination of orange and pink. Mm -hmm. That looks more corally than it does uh, rocky. But beautifully, beautifully polished as a result of being rolled around on the ocean floor, tumbled around on the ocean floor by the waves. So let me focus on that, it's kind of bright. Bring the brightness on the, let's see if we can get a better shot of that. Yeah, no, we can't do it on there because that camera doesn't know how to do that. <coughs> so, very different. Very interesting. I'm glad we get to see these. So, right there, that kind of looks quartzy, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I just got one like that right there. That's pretty, isn't it? Very different. Pink and orange. Yeah, pink and orange. Where does that come from? Would that from? be a shell or would that be uh, to me, oh. see the little uh the little uh kind of I, I call them worm markings. Mm -hmm. Uh I, I'd assume that with those colors it's more likely a shell than a rock. Mm -hmm. I mean a rock can you can get an orange rock. Uh, you're wearing basically uh, a core piece of quartz that uh, that has some um additional chemicals in it iron primarily to give it that yellow orange color but this to me looks like a rock this to me looks like shell material here so oops didn't mean to do that all right there we are okay so a nice little sample from shell beach near pismo beach in california usa photos at bit.ly slash wsp O zero zero twenty seven photos and the WSP and the P in photos are capitalized, so you can go back and look at these um, any other time. And so, uh, what I will do? Uh, so the first thing I will do is uh, uh, sometime this afternoon I'll take and join these two separate segments together, so we have one complete show. If they did do that, as a result, the chat stayed. So oh, it did. Yeah, so they may or may not be. So they might not be two different. Uh, 
might not be two different two places, different live streams since we came back so fast. So there's a chance that uh, we may lose the chat. Uh, we may lose the chat in the process, depending. Uh, and then, of course, remember that on Wednesday we're giving away uh, a photo. Brian Gates chose the pendant, uh, but we're giving away a photo from. Um, Cozumel. Cozumel. The Cozumel photo, which I thought was really, really nice. Uh, I did get the frames in today, uh, so I'll make sure that's framed, and I'll have it framed by the time you guys see it again uh, on Wednesday. And next Wednesday, uh, I don't know what I mentioned to you, my daughter was traveling uh, with her boyfriend in Spain, France, and Marrakesh, and they did. she finally did collect some samples for me. So I'm going to take a look at those, and if I like them, uh, we'll... Uh, we'll uh, put them in the queue. Uh, I do have other samples. I probably should have brought them with me to told uh, to tell you what the queue is for the number next couple of weeks. And um, Violet, I did get your sand sample. Thank you very much, and the additional gifts that you sent. So it's in the queue. And anybody who's in the queue now will play. Uh, will play uh, the viewers' samples that we get on uh, Wednesdays. Uh, so you can know in advance, and I will let you know via email in advance on what Wednesday we're going to show your sample, so that if you want to call in and talk about it, uh, you can do that. All right? You got anything else? Nope. Nada? All right, let's see. Make sure or, you tune in at 4 o'clock to the softer side. Yeah. Do, do, no giveaway today, right? No, no we don't do giveaways on guest, Fridays. Though. We have uh, a guest. We have a, she calls herself Salt Mama. So if you, uh, you know, feeling salty after all these ocean <laughs> pictures and uh, you don't have in. towels she's a uh, health and wellness coach and uh what was the other one sacred empowerment coach she teaches a lot about um energy and uh yeah i've i've worked with her and in, in on energy things so uh really interesting so yeah, yeah it'll be fun today and then of course we'll see you at seven o'clock for a gypsy's kiss all right you mm -hmm. guys have a good afternoon thank you for joining us today And thanks for being here. And for the World Sand Project, I'm the magical sand princess and life coach to the rich to and the famous, famous. Shelly Carney. And I'm your I'm Shelly Carney's co-host, Toby Eunice. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday on the World Sand Project at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and again on Friday for the World Sand Project at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Thanks for joining us today. We really do appreciate it.